I'm out here at Jeff's Auto Body and Customs and today on the channel we are going to change the differential covers on our second gen Ram mud truck to show truck SEMA build that I'm calling it and here are the covers that we picked up from a a Auto stores here so let me get you guys underneath there and show you what's all entailed on changing your covers or changing the gasket in case you guys have a gasket leak and I'll see you underneath <music> Now that I got you guys all underneath the truck, so here are some of the simple hand tools that we will be using. We will be using a half inch ratchet, possibly a half inch wrench just in case, a scraper and a screwdriver, and we may be using a little bit of a hammer to separate the cover from, from your axle. So one of the first things you want to do though before you get started is get your new cover if that's what you are putting on which we are putting a, a nice new chrome cover on here and just making sure that all the bolt holes line up to the the one that you're taking off and along if you're using a gasket making and here's the gasket number that we are using from Felpro for this second gen ram and making sure you have the right gasket and all the bolt holes match up to that in your cover and you'll be good to go. You don't have to use a gasket, but I am, but I'm also using a little bit of this gasket maker by Permatex. And this is for the, the differential covers and for uh, gear oil. Get your drip pan, throw that up underneath there. I will start taking the bolts off and if it's it's on if it's on right it's not gonna leak if you take them out but if yours is leaking as you're starting to take this off which I did this a about a year or two ago but the reason why I'm changing it is because you know we're turning this into a show truck and I did have chrome ones on here once before and I didn't have the old ones, and when we took the frame out to get sandblasted, well, it messed up the, the chrome ones that I have on here. So I'm going to finish taking these bolts out, and I'll show you what, what, what you got to do to, take the, uh, to get the oil to drain. All right, when you're down to your last two bolts, and I leave the two top ones in, and I just hand tighten them in, then all I'm going to do is get a screwdriver, and I'm just going to separate the case from the, the axle. And it'll start to crack and you'll see the oil start dripping out. And then we'll go back to the other side. And your oil will start dripping off or dripping up coming out and you just want to work you can leave your screwdriver there for the uh, the fluid to drain out which there's not much fluid in these um, which we'll go over that later so then after I get that all broken off then I'll go up take my two remaining ones out and the reason why I do that leave these uh, top two in and pull on it that way so this way if it falls down all the oil doesn't rush down on you and you don't lose your cover inside the uh, your drain pan but once you got it pride and crack then all you got to do is just pull off the the old cover and then here's the mating surface which we got to clean up so I'm gonna let this drain off for a little bit and then we'll come back and I'll show you guys how to uh, clean up the surface all right so once you got your cover off all I do is take a rag and I'll stuff a, a rag up along the top of the gears 
just so when you're taking off the gasket material it doesn't a piece doesn't go flying inside get caught in the gears just for GP purposes and a little bit of safe of mind you don't have to do it but but I do it and then you're gonna get your paint scraper or a gasket scraper and you're just going to start scraping the old gasket material off your your axle housing it's fairly easy you could use a I know Permatex makes a spray it's called gasket remover makes it a little bit easier it like kind of melts the old stuff off and then you just scrape it off which I forgot to pick some of that up but I'm gonna finish this up and we'll get back for the install now that we have the clean mating surface for our cover to go on and to give you a little bit more tips on what I used I used some 220 sandpaper once I got the bulk of it off I just scraped it off a little bit to clean it up and then I also used some starting fluid and like I said you cover the thing before the starting fluid or you could use gasket cleaner but starting fluid work is I just spray, spray a little bit on a rag and then I just go over to the, the mating surfaces on the cover or the axle here and then also on the cover I also used a little bit of light sanding just to scruff it up a little bit so that the gasket material will stick to the the, uh, the cover and won't slide around on me but when you're using the gasket or the gasket material you don't need to use both if one or one or the either will work with this but I like using two only because it helps keep the gasket up there and here is the cover like I said you just want to make sure everything every all the holes line up like they do so then I'll get the, the gasket which this is a felpro for this application RDS 55073 and I've always done all the all my axles that I've ever had to replace the gaskets in because they're leaking. This is how I've always done mine. Oops. So once again, like I said, you just get your gasket. Make sure that all the holes line up properly. That is how my gasket's going to go on. And it looks like all the holes line up correctly. So, put that off to the side the way that that's going to go on. And here's the, the gasket maker that I'll be using. And this is for gear oil by Permatex. So what I like to do is put a nice small bead all around the, the housing here. And I'll go around the holes a little bit. Just a nice small bead. And then I'll use my rubber gloves to spread it out evenly. Now if I was to use just the gasket maker, well then I would be using a, lot, a little bit more than I want, what I'm doing. But because I'm also using the gasket it saves on a little bit material for the the gasket maker and then I'll also put a small bead around here so once you got your small bead on there then you just want to take uh, your finger and I just use my uh, put a rubber glove on because this stuff is hard to get off and it's very sticky I just put a nice evenly coat spread it out a little bit all around the, the bolt holes and like I said I just use this just so I can uh, put the gasket on there and it holds the gasket in place once you you put the gasket up so once I got my gasket material all spread out I will get my my gasket and the way I lined it up before, I will just put it on there and just tap it, tack it on there. 
and just line the bolt holes up. I might have to move it around a little bit, twist it around a little bit to get them lined up the right way. And a good tip for you here is before you do all of this, is there's a magnet under at the bottom of your axle housing. Check your magnet. And if you see a lot of metal shavings on there, well then you know your gears are being worn down and good time to inspect all your, your gears inside here. And I will put my cover back up. And try not to shift the, the gasket around. And to anchor the gasket in place, where I'll, what I'll do is start with the upper corner. And then what I'll do is go with another one elsewhere. And then get another one. Maybe down here on the bottom. So once you get a couple bolts in, your gasket your gasket's gonna stay in place, and then you could just go around and finish your, your bolts in. So once we get that done, I'll be back. So now they're all snug to the cover. So then I'll start from the top, I'll go to the bottom, and then I'll just work my way around the cover, and then once around the cover. And then as you're doing this, you'll see the gasket material maker coming out. So once I get this done, we'll let this tack up. I'll do the front cover, then we'll come back and add some fluid to it. Well, once you get all this done, and I've got the front diff, diff cover on that one, on the front so we're back here and now we're going to fill this this axle up with with gear oil and what i have here is 7590 by lucas oil it's full synthetic and this is what i will be adding into my axles on my my show truck build so what i'm going to do is just take off the the plug and Here's a little tip for you guys is on these custom plugs sometimes with the chrome and stuff like that they give you this little plastic grommet on here that will seal it to keep it from leaking but what I also like to do is put a little bit of Teflon tape around the threads and thread it back in there so this way it doubles protects that it's not going to leak on me and all I'm going to do is put it up there and squeeze the bottle all in there. And once once I have this some of it in there, then what I like to do is I'll take my knife and I will poke a hole in it. So this way it could uh, just flow right through there. And it makes it easier so the air pushes the fluid down. Well, I'm going to finish this up. And then we're going to wrap things up here. And uh, we'll let you know how much gear oil this axle took. All right. There you go. We have now filled it up. And how you can tell that it's filled is when you have just a small amount coming out over the threads or if you're not too sure you could get a zip tie and just poke it in there and down a little bit and then when you see that you have fluid there at the end of your zip tie then you know you're filled up high enough so then once I get it all filled out as you can see that we have a little bead running out of the, the hole you just don't want if you've tried filling it up more and put that in it's just going to pour out. So what? The, and then I got my plug, which I did already put the Teflon tape on it, and I'm just going to tighten her up. Then get my adjustable wrench, 
and just give it a good snug and there you have it. You change the fluid, you change the gasket, and I was able to put a new cover here on the show truck build. And you just wipe clean off all the excess oil and you're finished. Now the only difference that I have to do with the front is because I have all the steering rods coming across the front, the steering arms and stuff like that. I'm just going to have to get a, uh, a tube so I could go over the top and feed it into the front. But like I says, uh, we just used a little over two and a quarter of these, maybe a little bit under two and a quarter will, is what you need to change your, your axle fluid. Well, I hope this video helps all you guys out. Don't forget to smash down on that like, comment, and subscribe button to see more videos on this. Well, till next time, I'm Joe, driving trucks and hunting bucks is how I roll it. Wicked Fabs!